Hello everyone, welcome back to Parkitect, welcome back to campaign mode and in today's episode we're going to have a go at Coaster Canyon um, so this one reads, a barren desert canyon with ample land available for construction provides a perfect spot for a new tourist attraction a giant cliffside hypercoaster is the first step for this soon to be roller coaster paradise so we need to have at least six coasters in the park with an excitement rating of five, uh, 50 or above thinking of Roller Coaster Tycoon there, the 5.0, uh, have at least 550 guests in your park, and the optional goals are to have 700 guests in your park, which should be too difficult, but it's got to be done by August year 2. So we're going to have to get a move on with this one. Here we are in the map then, and uh, just set the entrance to zero like we usually do, and put it on pause, because we're fighting against the clock already from the get-go. So let's have a look at the map then, it's pretty big, to be fair. Um, yeah, we've got a hypercoaster already, uh, which has good stats. Um, we can charge a bit more for that, it's £5 at the moment, we'll charge 12 and um, that'll help get a few guests in and get the money flowing, I guess. And um, we've got a flat ride here as well. Orbiters three pounds. Let's make that five pounds. So there we go, straight off the mark. And um, we're doing some management features. Yeah, I have actually played this map before and done a video on it. I think it's the first campaign level that I recorded, um, and that's on my first playthrough of the campaign series, which I never actually finished. Um, so it's one of the first videos ever on the channel. But I thought we'll redo all the old ones anyway um, because it's been a long time since I did that I can probably do a bit better with the scenery and everything this time so um, if you have seen that before then here we are again in Coaster Canyon um, I think all I'm going to do then is put some research on coasters and start building let's check out the rides so we've got a good selection of gentle rides just the Enterprise and the Orbiter, obviously, which we've already laid down in thrill rides. Um, five coasters, but nothing great. Obviously, we've already got a steel coaster. Mine Train might be a good one for this map, I guess. We need to start getting coasters in the park straight away, so it's a good job we're researching that. We've got an elevator, which I guess would be kind of cool with this elevated land. Um, and a log flume. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to get into the first time lapse and I'll see you all over there. Right, so change of plan. Um, we're not going to go straight into the time lapse. I just want to explain what I ended up doing with this map and what I will continue to do with future maps uh, in the playthrough now. Um, you can see we've not got the gold coin here yet. Obviously, we've not played it yet. Um, however, these are all the attempts that I had at playing through normally trying to meet the optional goals um, I found the time in this one was just too strict to build a nice park and complete all the goals by August year 2 bearing in mind you have to build 6 coasters and get 700 guests in the park I just found it couldn't be done properly so I ended up just cheesing it So welcome to the madness that is the Coaster Canyon Speedrun Park. <laughs> you can see what a mess this thing is. Um, it's just spammed with coasters. All steel coasters mainly. Boomerangs. Um, this is just the easiest way i found to complete the optional goals. Um, trying to play through it normally. I just kept getting hit by unhappy guests. Rubbish weather not making any money despite having like three major coasters running with 15 pound a go just everything seemed to be against me doing it normally and this park rating was like halfway down so trying to rush it and do the nice scenery at the same time isn't working for me anymore so from now on and this is how we're going to do it we're just going to cheese each scenario with a park like this because they're only going to get harder as we go forward um, and then afterwards I will do it properly I won't always show you 
these parks, obviously. Uh, but it's just going to save me a lot of stress in trying to do everything in one build. Um, I don't want to rush them anymore. I want to do what everyone else does, take my time, theme up one coaster at a time. Uh, which is probably how I should have done the whole thing, to be honest. But yeah, it, it took me to this one to realise that the game doesn't want you to meet these goals and build an ice park at the same time. It probably can be done. But um, you saw the amount of attempts that I had. Uh, we're going to go back to my favourite one. Um, obviously in the time lapse that's coming up next. Uh, but I just want to show you this and show you how I'm actually going to meet these goals. So all these boomerangs that have got an excitement rating of over 50. Um, I also put in this orange surge, I think it's called blue surge, but I recolored it. <laughs> I don't know why, because we're not doing it properly anyway. But um, this is literally just an absolute, from a gameplay perspective, it's the perfect coaster. It's fully optimized. The operations on this are brilliant. You can run four trains, and there's constantly guests getting on and off of it. And it's got an excitement rating of 61, so it's the perfect coaster really to put in your park if you're just trying to win the campaigns like this. Um, I haven't completely finished this one because I still need to get 700 guests in, but because I've completed the non-optional one by end of August year two, there's no time constraint now. So I'm just gonna do this, um, get it done, and then I will see you all over in the time lapse in just a minute. There we go. I've done it in the easiest possible way. Uh, it did take a little bit longer because it took till April year three, but fortunately um, for the challenge goal, that didn't matter. So now if we go back to the map, we should have the gold coin. And yes, there it is. I have to do that from a completionist point of view. <laughs> so I will be doing that, obviously without making too much of a fuss about it in future playthroughs. And with that being said, let's get into the proper time lapse and I'll see you all over there. So finally, nine minutes and 30 seconds into the video, we are actually getting into the time lapse. And the first thing you can see that I've done is remove the coaster that's already in the park. Because I wanted to put in my own steel coasters and notice the plural there, we're doing dueling coasters. And these are very much inspired by West Coast Racers at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which I believe are the Comas, um, which is a similar sort of track to this one, so it's somewhat believable. And yeah, I just had the idea in my head that we'd have two big launched dueling coasters with some elements of interaction with each other and we'll try and make them sort of finish around the same time which is always a bit tricky in park attack because you can't really tell how they're getting on um, until you put them into test mode and synchronize them together so you have to build a bit and then test them and then build a bit more um, obviously because you're only building one coaster at a time you haven't got the the ghost sort of train going round on the other track at the same time you're building so you can't see exactly where they're gonna end up on the track but um, other than that we're just doing some pretty standard sort of elements that you get on these coasters such as um, inverted stools I guess um, like heavily banked sections where the trains run together and at, at this point the layout isn't that long for each of them but it was already starting to cost a lot of money and I was running out of money really quickly um, I would like to try and go back later on and extend the layouts a bit but for the playthrough at this time they're absolutely fine uh, you can easily charge £15 for each and make a absolute ton of money from them, which is good. That's what we want for the gameplay. And yeah, I just 
I'm actually really happy with how these coasters turned out. I think the layouts are really cool. Um, especially that banked moment where they synchronised together, which took a bit of doing. I had to keep uh, going back and modifying the track, putting extra elements in, and trying as well to give them both the sort of same amount of inversions, the same helixes and everything like that, but without making them, you know, follow each other, um, like for like, if that makes sense. I wanted a bit more variation in the layouts for these. And um, yeah, I've also quickly put a couple more rides in because I realised that we were sort of hemorrhaging money and running out very quickly. So I needed to actually have something in the park that guests could start spending money on. So I quickly chucked in a couple of flat rides there. And yeah, we've kind of got there now with the way it's going to look in regards to making it to the stool bit at the same time so that's good um, it's just a case of working out how to finish off the layouts at this point and do it fairly cheaply <laughs> and obviously we built ourselves into a bit of a corner I thought that I had plenty of space for the brake run and everything like that but I really didn't um, so yeah that was something to work on to find a way back to the station for both these coasters and to find a way back to the station with them finishing at around the same time I do think it's a good challenge building dueling coasters in this game uh, something that I always find quite fun to do and I always like the way that they look in the end and you can sort of watch them go round and run together I think it's really cool so yeah, you can just see finishing off there, trying to work out how to get into the brake run. Um, and then I put it in test and realised they don't finish at the same time. I can't remember which one finished first, but I had to add an extra element to one of them um, in order to make them as synchronised as possible. They're not, still not perfect. Um, and again, that's probably something I wouldn't mind going back to at some point. But it's difficult as well because I'm sort of bringing them into a, into the station with an S bend at the end, which isn't ideal. But really, I, I sort of run out of space, so I think the second half of the layout needs a little bit more adjusting later on. But at the moment, they're fit to run, um, and they're a really good money maker for the park. So obviously, I don't want to mess around too much with them. The next thing to do then is to get some shops in, uh, some food stalls, so we sort of work out how we're going to have a little sort of main street building here, and obviously that will extend at some point, we'll build some more facades along by the, uh, the wall section, I guess, um, the quarry wall type thing. Um, and to start with I just built it like this but then later on I do have to go back and place a depot there because the guests are constantly moaning about uh, haulers moving the crates around the park if you don't which is fair enough I guess it's an important part of the gameplay in Park Attack but yeah kind of frustrating when you're just trying to get on with building a park so yeah, you can see how everything sort of come together there. I do end up moving the chair swing out of the way because I want a coaster element there at some point. But the more I look into it, the more there's probably not going to be enough room anyway. So yeah, that might have to be uh, refought later on. Anyway, moving on, we are building a mine train coaster. Got to have a mine train in a map like this. Um, as you can see I'm kind of going for like a western type theme um, I didn't want to do steampunk because I'm not really that good at it I thought I would just try and do western but maybe mix it up a bit um, which hopefully you'll see later on when we get to the scenery like I said earlier in future I'm gonna look to try and build all the scenery um, as you know, 
alongside building the coasters because we're not going to be in a rush to meet any goals uh, which would be better so I won't just be <coughs> trying to make the gameplay goals I will be trying to make a really nice park at the same time and I think it will be much better to watch as well there we go then completed layout for the mine train goes to nothing out of the ordinary really just some drops and helixes nice little section over the water where we will build a bridge no doubt at some point um, it didn't quite meet the 50 excitement so I've raised it up a bit and I think it's on something like 48.5 so I'm just really hoping once I give it a station and some theming that it will be surpassing the 50 mark um, yeah unfortunately they d you don't get particularly high excitement with these coasters unless you do more unrealistic drops they don't tend to have many steep drops because they are family coasters but yeah it's fine we'll find a way of making it a 50 uh, later on so you can see now I'm putting in a building um, another food stall at the moment we're just doing hot dogs I think and soft drinks everywhere because that's all we've got researched at the moment obviously all the research has to go onto coasters because we need six of them um, and obviously it doesn't help when you're just getting stuff like powered coaster in the research you know for a map like this you'd have thought that they'd have given you good research op options but unfortunately the research is just random what you get you can play at a different time you'll get completely different coasters um, which is unfortunate in one of my playthroughs before I got the Gershnau coaster which is one that I want to build in this map don't think I'm getting it this time um, little um, spoiler there but yeah we'll um, we'll work with what we're given I guess because we've got a good basis for the park here and it's coming together nicely and obviously there's no worry about rushing things now it can be done at a steady pace <laughs> um, so yeah I've decided the new location for the chair swing there I think that looks quite nice there just over by the water side and I'm immediately working on the next coaster because at this point I was still thinking that I am going to make them optional goals by August year 2 which I was nowhere near to doing um, but yeah the next coast you can see is the B&M invert which is always a nice coaster type to build in the game but it is quite difficult because you need loads of clearance for it um, I find that to be quite a struggle sometimes having enough room for it obviously we've got loads of room on this map but the only problem is with where I put it here it sort of closes off the map behind it so I need to make sure that I can run a path underneath it um, or around it somehow but the reason I've sort of positioned it where I have is because I didn't want to make the park too big and um, carry on going back too far which is sort of another reason that I got rid of the initial coaster that was in the park um, because I just felt like it would be too big a park for guests to um, to not moan it but it turns out that actually it would have been fine to keep that one but obviously I had different plans anyway so that's that and um, we're now just trying to work on this layout weaving it in and out of itself and finding a good way to get back to the break run back to the station you can see I actually started this coaster with the break run first because I thought I'm not going to give myself enough room for it I do end up moving it anyway and having a di diagonal one in the end anyway but um, yeah I think that's quite a good idea sometimes to plan your brake runs first because then you know you're going to have enough room to get back to the station when you need to and um, yeah for the time being this coaster is kind of closing off this part of the park and that's fine um, we will obviously open it up a bit more when we continue building uh, but for now I will see you all over in the first live section so I'll see you there here we are then in the live section and I will just show you a little bit of an overview of what we've got so far so here's our sort of entrance area and I've done some very basic theming here just to get a general idea of what we're going for Obviously I need to add a lot more detail 
to this area and now decide what to do here I was going to have a coaster come out of here come down and do a loop um, but I just don't know if we're going to have room to do that and then have lift hill cut I just think it's all going to be a bit messy um, especially with the brake run for these being here so I probably need to look into different ideas for what to do here for the entrance um, I feel like these may be moved at some point um, it's a good place to have them for now though because guests will come in the park and go straight on them start earning money from them and yeah I'm really happy with all the coasters in the park so far I think we've got a good selection um, but we're really low for money um, and this is part of my problem before with the playthrough for some reason you just don't make money easily in this map um, I probably can do but because I'm trying to build too many coasters too quickly you see we're on February year 2 that's uh, part of the problem but um, we've got a good selection now anyway well, I'll say we've got a good selection, still need a couple more really, don't I? So I suppose we've got four in the park. But the mine train's not counting towards it, so it's free at the moment. Um, the guest the guess flow, I'm not worried about. That will come with the, you know, with the coaster count. Even if we get five coasters and then try and get 700 guests in, we can then unlock a monorail coaster which I think will be a good one for this park because they're nice and uh, compact as well I think it fit nicely into this theme so yeah that's where we are at the moment and I think the next step really is to try and turn this from a barren bit of land into an actual theme park so let's get back into the time lapse and I'll see you all over there welcome back to the time lapse then and I'm going to have to speak really really quickly for this bit because I had to heavily edit everything down in order to not make the video hours and hours long there's so much footage and um, this was a really big part to fill up um, and to complete all the goals make all the six coasters so yeah I um, made things a bit more challenging for myself as well because I decided to custom support several of the coasters in this park but we'll get to that later anyway what we're doing First off is extending the layout of the dueling coasters. I wanted these to be, you know, a, well I wanted this to be a standout attraction for the park. So I wanted it to have a nice long layout with two launches. Um, so I saved up a bit of money, paid off the loans and everything. Now that the park's earning fairly reasonable money, I was able to get things running enough so that I had some money to build the rest of these layouts because obviously dueling coasters are sort of two times more expensive than a regular coaster in the game because you're building twice the amount of track um, and yeah I wanted to continue making sure that they had dueling elements that synchronize with each other um, so you've got a is it like a high five type element here where the two bank tracks face towards each other which was I found quite tricky to make especially as it had to weave in and out of the mine train coaster as well which was already in place so yeah I think I did a reasonable job of making these elements synchronize and then it was really just a case of finding the way back to the brake run um, because I've already used so much room in the park just on these three coasters that we've got in so far but I think it's worth it because they really are like I say standout attractions and uh, these are great money owners as well running at 15 pounds each I mean I could I could have kept them the way they were but I wanted the main thing is I wanted to get that element in with the um, with the high five sort of section um, so yeah that's all done now I cut out a bit of the footage there and I'm just showing you a little bit of the rock work that I'm putting in around this area so we hide some of the ugly tunnels um, 
and yeah, spent a lot of time building rock work around here. Quite difficult for stuff like this because you have to use several different types of rocks to make everything fit in nicely. And yeah, I, I cut a lot of this out anyway, which I would have done even if it's a shorter video because it's not that fun to watch endless amounts of rock work being done on a build. Um, and then the next thing we work on is this station for the dueling coasters. So this was inspired by reference images, as are a lot of my builds, and I just decided to create something a little bit more industrial, sort of maybe like a mining facility type thing. I'm not really sure what I was going for here, but um, yeah, I think this one turned out really cool. So using um, plain walls rather than the normal sort of Wild West walls because I can do a few more cutaway bits and some more cool tricks with the windows and stuff like that which you will see in a sec um, I, I'm now <laughs> doing this cutaway thing for so many buildings um, to make it look like the walls have weathered away or whatever and you can see the sort of plaster work underneath or whatever like sort of like the decals but custom made um, I did a few in my last challenge mode series which obviously I'm using construction anarchy for I realised that it can still be done um, without construction anarchy um, you just don't have as much flexibility but it still worked out fine I think and added a nice detail to the building something a little bit more custom something that I wouldn't usually do in campaign and it's really just a case of trying to think of different tricks to vary the style um, with a park this size and obviously going for the western theme it's it can tend to get rather repetitive so I did struggle a bit in this playthrough in this map to try and make some varied um, scenery and theming and try and use different techniques because yeah like I said it can all look quite samey but um yeah, using a few different colours as well, different path colours and stuff. And uh, once all the paths have been supported with pillars and things like that, it all starts coming together a little bit more. And then I wanted to do something different with the windows here. So some of them are sunken in, some of them have windows missing, and some of them you can just see through. So I wanted that sort of element of being able to see through to the station while you're in the queue. And I think that worked out pretty well, using lots of pillars to do various things I was trying to do here. And I love the look of the sunken in windows in Parkitect, I think it looks really good. And something that you can do in vanilla as well, the windows are quite flexible to place them where you want. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this building. Um, I'd start putting a bit of greenery around, I know it's, it's difficult when you're doing western because it tends to be quite barren without much... Um, foliage but I just think you know you need a bit of greenery in the game even in a western map just to add a little bit of color to it a little bit of variation and then the last thing I work on here is the sign for the Rocky Racers which is the name of the coasters and you can see we've skipped a bit there unfortunately I think I genuinely forgot to record that where I built the custom supports for this element of the coaster although it doesn't matter too much because we've got custom supporting all around these coasters um, by the end of the build so you will see me work on that more later as well but yeah we'll get to that so the next thing I wanted to work on was the entrance and building a tiny bit of a main street here um, just two buildings because it's all I really had room for um, I guess I could have fit a third in but I thought two buildings is enough and then it looks really nice with the coasters dipping in behind them into the tunnels um, I think this is a really sort of exciting entrance area to the park and the guests coming in and straight away seeing this coaster flying over their heads I think it's a really cool idea and something that you do see in a lot of parks as well really builds up that excitement for the rides unfortunately it's a bit of a shame that I'm not able to build an entrance always for these parks 
um, just because you can't build outside of the park boundaries. Um, I probably could have built something just inside, but you know, we had that toilet block there as well, so I just left it as it is. And um, yeah, we can just imagine there's an entrance there, I guess. So, doing a bit of detailing on these buildings, then there's nothing really too exciting or special to mention with these ones, they're pretty standard Western. But I am starting to use the font or the text uh, piece a lot more to add sort of thinner borders and borders that can have more height variation and be placed in different grid spaces and stuff like that. I think that's a really useful technique. Um, the only thing is you have to play about with the colours a lot more to get them to match what you want uh, because for some reason the text is much brighter than, than other pieces in the game. I have no idea why that is but it's fine. And then I'm going to work a little bit on the backstage area because we've got a staff room in there so I decided to just block it off with slightly nicer wall piece keeping the same gate. Um, and I just kept it really simple like that to be honest we do add a little bit more in there later on but at the moment I'm just putting some foliage in some bushes and a couple of those um, spooky trees which are now unlocked which were already in the map when it started uh, but I removed the ones that are already in but I thought we're going to use them somewhere else because they look really nice um, as part of this theme so yeah, now going back to the main street buildings and adding a little bit more detail. Um, I think I'd left it a couple of days or whatever and I thought, yeah, we need to add a bit more to these. So just giving them some awnings and a little bit of the, the decal, the sort of dirt decal uh, cutaway pieces and stuff as well. Because I felt they just needed a little bit more originality, a little bit more interest, um, especially as we've done that on buildings elsewhere. I don't want anything being too plain, even though Western is quite a plain theme to work with. But yeah, cutting out quite a lot of the footage there, because again, it's all quite samey. Uh, I wanted to sort of finish off this main street type area. Uh, we've got a shop building that I'd already put in, but I wanted to get some different colours in there, so I built this red building uh, for no reason really other than decoration. Um, it doesn't serve any purpose at all and the trouble is because the coaster brake run runs right behind it it was quite difficult to work out how that was going to work so in the end it ends up being quite a thin building but I think it works out fine and I'm using the text as well to add a diagonal type trim um, these sort of wall brackets to the building and then I really like the way this turned out using basic shapes and two different types of borders as well um, just to layer it up a bit and that's something I'm probably going to use a lot more in future because um, it's quite a nice easy way of making a bit more detailing on a building. So moving on then to the main restaurant building in the centre here um, just um, adding a little bit more detail to this as well um, not really a lot to say about that. It was pretty plain when I started with it. Um, so that's it. You've gone back and done moving so quick now <laughs> through the build. So I'm going to have to speed up my commentary a bit. I actually did a canopy for the carousel. I think I deserve a medal for actually bothering to do that because normally I'm no good at them. But that one I think turned out really nice. We'll take a bit more of a detailed look at it in the cinematics because I just skipped straight through it. And you can see the next thing that we're doing now. I wasn't happy with the inverted coaster layout. It was in the way and I had a vision in my head that I wanted a section that runs under the path with um, a couple of corkscrews. So that's what I've got done. And uh, this actually took ages because I was re-leveling all the terrain and like trying for ages to get a good coaster layout but I've cut out a lot of it and only just left in the bits of the final layout that stays just to save time on the video length again um, so yeah I did it wasn't this simple for me to build a layout that I was happy with it didn't come together as quickly as it looks here it took a lot longer and obviously all the path work and the terrain work as well took ages but yeah this layout is much better 
the guests can walk through it and get to the next bit of the park afterwards because we obviously need more room to build and more coasters to meet the goals um, in the end. And so then I decided to work on the underground section or the lower section that the coaster runs through and I just used some roof tiles for the ground texture and the adventure wall pieces to go around it. To start with I used more diagonal pieces but I kind of preferred the idea of having more rounded pieces so I changed it to that. And then stuck a custom fence around it because obviously we don't have round fence pieces the normal fences so we had to improvise with that. And then doing a little bridge and stuff like that and just making this um, path area a lot nicer. I do custom support this entire coaster which you will see part of being done in a minute. First you're just shoving some rocks down in the down in the ditch or whatever it is. Um, what do you think? Yeah it really adds to it, makes it look a bit more detailed. And I'm just adding some um, canopies so that people don't uh, have any loose articles dropped on them but we do add more to that later which I'll go into in a bit more detail later when we get to it um, just put a flat ride in there a teacups and gave it a roof because for some reason it's been raining a lot in this map which is very strange for a western dry climate like this and um, I don't know why it rains so much but yeah we needed a few um, sort of indoor covered up rides to allow for that and now you can see I've put together a whole restaurant building um, and built a custom sign for it which I then wanted over on these buildings as well so jumping around a little bit there and then making some sort of custom canopies for the seating areas which I think look really nice as well and again I did say I'm gonna have to get through this time lapse really quickly uh, toilet building going in now as well using pretty much the same type of design work so that everything's coherent in this area and then I did a seating area because uh, I didn't think we have many spaces in the park where guests can sort of have a picnic and whatnot so that's what we got there and this becomes just a little uh, snack sort of stall next to it so we've researched quite a lot of shops now so there's various different food items that guests can buy in the park who don't want scooting snacks uh, thought I'd try and be a little bit creative with the name seeing as it's a western theme and yeah that's good enough I think a little bit cheesy but whatever and doing a bit of foliage there and the next thing we work on is the mine train coaster station so this was a pretty straightforward station very standard western theming but I think the roof of this one gives it the nice extra detail um, using different sort of shapes and different colours as well. It's You can really improve the look of a building with uh, just changing some of the colours very marginally. A trick that Astrotron does a lot and um, pulls off really well. So yeah, I think that looks pretty cool and we've got um, because it's all raised up, I had like some supports underneath and stuff like that. I uh, had to support this section of the coaster as well that runs over the park. Uh, over the park, over the path even, um, again just for sort of the loose articles and whatnot, just for a little bit of realism and we had a sign in, I named every coaster in this park and gave every coaster a sign, I'm trying to do that as much as possible now and I also add in a um, transfer track and maintenance shed for as many of the coasters as I could, unfortunately I weren't able to do that for the um, racing the dueling coasters but yeah you can see we've got the shed in there and the transfer track for this one and hopefully with enough room to make it believable that the trains can actually fit in there also done a bit of foliage around that area nothing special same as everywhere else and then i wanted to add to these buildings that i already had in a lot of these buildings were just shells really that i put as placeholders for all of the shops and stuff when i was working for the goals and then um, you can see I've also added a bit of realism onto the roof with a sort of AC unit and some pipes um, which is just really something I've done on some of the buildings that didn't have um, tilted roofs or slanted roofs just um, 
to fill in the space really and make them a bit less bland. Then I'm putting a bridge in the area that connects the mine train to the main park. So obviously across this bridge over to a separate area of the park, which I think is quite fun. Um, it doesn't connect anywhere else, so it's a bit of a dead end. But I think that's fine when you, you've got a coaster at the end of it like that. Um, and then going back to these main street buildings again and adding a little bit more signage and stuff like that to them. And then I start on the rock work for the mine train coaster, um, which I always find this is a laborious task. So I blueprinted some of the rock work I'd already done, which helped quite a lot and saving me time and I've cut quite a lot out of this build but it still took quite a long time to, to or rather I've cut a lot out of the video but the build still took quite a long time to complete with all this rock work and then varying the colours and everything like that um, I didn't do it absolutely everywhere I just did it around most of the coaster but I didn't want to you know have have it go all the way up the hill I still wanted a bit of a lift hill um, that rose higher up than the actual rocks and rock work itself so yeah that's what we've got and um, yeah as the viewer you'll probably be glad that I cut a lot of that footage out because <laughs> it did take some time you can see here then I'm starting work on the custom supports for the dueling coasters this was probably the longest bit of the build because um, I was going really detailed with some of the supports, doing some really interesting stuff, doing some diagonal pieces and everything. And obviously there's double the work because there's two coaster tracks to support. Um, I sort of took a breather as well and put a wipeout in there because I felt there wasn't enough of interest in this area of the park. Um, and the wipeout was really one of the only flat rides that I could actually fit in that space out of the ones that I've researched so that's what we went for and then everything's just risen up a bit and some adventure wall pieces have been added to the side just to get rid of the, the plain sort of brown wall that builds up there otherwise and yes, uh, with colours in this park I did struggle a bit. We tend to go for really obvious choices for Western theme, and really bland sort of browns and oranges and stuff. But, you know, it's difficult to think what colours are going to look good in a Western theme. Obviously you can't go for anything like bright blue or bright green or anything like that because it just wouldn't fit right with the rest of the theme. Um, but again, I guess that's part of the fun of trying to think of different creative ways to build a Western theme. A um, bit more support work then getting done here, which again was a very lengthy process. I didn't actually mind doing it though for these coasters and for this park because I could really see the difference it was making. I think um, the way the in-game supports run, especially when you've got a lot of uh, elements going over paths and stuff like that, just didn't look right. I had to add these in to really give it that edge and I'm really happy with how it looked I think the work paid off um, probably some of the best support work I've done especially in vanilla but yeah it's you know it's always going to take a long time especially when you've got big elements like this um, you know really high up the dive loop and stuff like that so yeah, and I think it's fun to support these sections where there's interaction with the coasters and like that. There's almost like a viewing platform there as well as if it was a zoo. Um, not completely realistic because the coaster is sort of right above where the viewing platform is. But I think it's kind of fun because they can watch through at the launch as well from that section. Um, I couldn't raise it up anymore because the game didn't allow me to basically. Now we're moving on um, to something really interesting that I decided to do uh, for my sins. I made some custom um, netting to go underneath the coaster track where there's any elements where loose articles could fly out of the ride and uh, you know for elements that are over the paths. Um, I quickly stuck a top spin in there as well <laughs> for the record but yeah with this coaster netting what I did I used the the framework pieces and shrunk down the flat rocks 
to 0.01 or something, you know, 0.12 or something like that, really small. Um, and then did a couple of different variations. So one square piece, one triangular piece, and one um, sloped piece, which doesn't look quite as good, but I needed it for over the coaster station uh, because the tracks go directly over the queue line. Sorry, not the station, the queue. Um, but I thought if we're going to do it in one place, we have to do it everywhere. So I spent a lot of time then placing these uh, pieces of netting over all the path work under the inverted coaster and the two dueling coasters because uh, there's a lot of parts where they go over the path um, and it's just a, a, a bit of realism that I think really adds to the build um, I think this could be a believable realistic park maybe not the most detailed theming I've ever done but a lot more realism in this one which I quite enjoyed doing for a change um, so yeah, you can see I'm doing the sort of brake run and maintenance shed and transfer track for the inverted coaster now. And yeah, that came together pretty easily. For the first time I think ever, I did the transfer track before the station and then modelled the station on the same pieces that I used for the maintenance shed. Which, yeah, it's, it's, like I say, it's something I'd normally do, but yeah, it worked out fine. Um, I guess this is a really basic station. Um, not too much detail to it at all really it's just the fact that it's quite near the back of the park um, it's not a station that you're really going to notice that much you know it's not in a prominent area um, so it mainly just serves a purpose for keeping the, the trains dry I guess <laughs> or whatever coast the stations are for um, so yeah, now the custom supporting starts on the inverted coaster. Again, I cut out most of the, the uh, footage because it is rather boring to watch and a little bit boring to do. Um, I also built some catwalks and some custom supports for the catwalks on the lift hill for this one, um, which wasn't too bad because I could blueprint quite a lot of it. It's just the way these sit on uh, smaller grid pieces than the other pieces um, so it's a little bit more challenging to get them in but yeah the supports easy because I blueprinted them and then doing a bit with the mid course brake run as well there and some netting going in and then the final supports at this point um, because I've made it pretty much all the way around the track so these supports are interesting I don't know if they're that realistic for a B&M invert but um, I just thought they have two straight pieces because in vanilla you can't really do a, a, a sloped piece connecting to the main piece if that makes sense. Um, it just doesn't tend to work properly with the grid and stuff so that's uh, fine. Then um, covering up all the lower ground section with rocks and grass, I've not mentioned the grass actually, I've been using the tall grass loads in my builds recently, did loads in the uh, farm map as well, orchard acres, I've been doing it in this one to just give the sense of sort of barren lands that's been dis, uh, sort of disused and not well kept, um, I think that works really well, changing them to the brownie grey colour for the bottom bits here, when the coaster goes over. Um, Look, looking like it's sort of been purposely not well maintained. So you can see also stuck another flat ride in, I believe that's a jumper, and we're on to our fifth coaster for the park now, which is the RMC monorail coaster or the single rail coaster. And here I wanted to do the most compact layout I possibly could because I was really rapidly running out of space in the park, and I decided that if we just bung it all there with a station right at the back of this section behind the inverted coaster. This could just be a new ride that's been put into the park in the last two years um, without too much thought to theming or anything. They just had a budget for a slightly cheaper RMC. I guess this would be cheaper than a hybrid coaster. Not that we have that to build anyway in uh, vanilla. But yeah, They've just put it at the back of the park, um, given it a quick station, and opened opened it to the public. And that's 
you know, realistically to me, I believe a park with lots of coasters like this would do. Obviously, like you think of the Six Flags and Cedar Fair type parks that um, tend to get a lot of these um, monorail coasters. I think there's a good few of them open now, which is funny. When this game was new, there wouldn't like. I think there was one maybe in the world. Okay, so jumping over back to this area and doing a bit more coaster netting, you can now see in a bit more detail what the triangle, triangular pieces look like, and I think um, they really help to add to the more realistic look rather than just having everything a square grid. Now I'm working on a couple of uh, buildings here for the shops and stalls in this area um, because I felt that there was nothing really for the guests. This is the only place that I could find to actually fit them in because uh, everything else is just covered by a path, coaster track and everything else. So yeah, I used some reference images again for these buildings like I normally do, but I kept these really simple. I didn't go into too much detail. My idea again is that this is the newest area of the park and you know they've used better materials maybe. Um that don't get as rugged or whatever, or I don't know, but they just feel a little, a little bit more modern and well put together. Um, so everything's sort of like clean and tidy around here. Um, another thing I forgot to mention as well is that I use a cutaway trick for the paths um, to add like little, um, like broken pieces, like gravelly pieces and stuff, and I use the burial mounds as well to do a similar thing just to give some path variation because we're using this standard generic path work that came with the map all around the park and I felt that something needed to be added to make it a bit more interesting so that's what I've gone and done and um, yeah finally doing the second building using I believe yeah using the crate pieces for windows here <laughs> just uh, just for the fun of it, I guess. I don't know why. Just uh, again, a bit of variation. Finding different ways to vary my build um, throughout this map, and then adding a quick um, cover for the path of the jumper and a uh, fence. Can't think of the fence. <laughs> a fence around the edge before we go back to the monorail coaster and put a station in which was pretty quick to build to be honest I haven't even had to cut that much of the footage out of this build because by this point I was putting stuff together much quicker and um, I sort of had a clear idea of what I wanted and I was just gonna get it done because I wanted to get this park finished because I've been working on it for a long long time now um, I'd say this is one of my longest campaign builds out of any of the maps I've done big custom sign then going in for this ride really couldn't think of what to call it I'm so bad with names so it ended up being the golden wonder which I think is a breakfast cereal <laughs> but um, it works for this theme and this coaster style and the color I think it works all right so that's what we went for and um, the font the text the sign rather is the last thing I actually put in because I couldn't think of a name for it um, and then I'm just adding a couple of extra details to the roof as well for this ghost station just to make it a bit less boxy because this really is just a rectangular box and again this is newer theming that they've done they kept things more simple more modern I guess in the way that they've designed it that's my thoughts behind it and save me adding loads and loads of details and again using some uh, uh, crate pieces or some crates rather for the for the windows and I had to just use basic shapes for the canopies there in order to uh, get them on the right grid space because they're not completely in the middle if that makes sense uh, but I just blueprinted those ones across I think from the shops so that saved me a bit of work as well and finally for this coaster then I am doing the maintenance shed and again keeping it very simple uh, because of the way the terrain worked here this is miles off the ground so I did actually build a little uh, set of stairs for the maintenance staff and 
it goes into a tunnel to just make you believe it comes out the other side so that there's some sort of believable way they can actually work on this coaster. Um, again, try to think of little realism details, but without getting overboard with it. Now, it's not something I want to spend ages doing, particularly. Using this technique as well with the signs, we've got to mention earlier, putting a star in. Um, I think Astro might have done that before. I've, I've seen it done somewhere, but I just went onto Google and Google star symbols and copied and pasted it into the text. And that works in Parker Tech, which is so cool because it means you can make different, you know, text symbols and uh, little logos and stuff. So it's definitely something that I want to think about doing more of in the future. Here you can see I'm, add I'm adding in some cactus pieces, some cacti and some, um, you know, long grass as well. And just some details like that. I also put a toilet building in there. And we've got to move swiftly on to our final coaster for the park. Um, because we're rapidly running out of time. This is the last thing I build. It is the Ghost Flower. Um, I was thinking about doing a an inverted spinning coaster. Um, because I really, really love that coaster type, uh, especially in the game. I think it looks amazing. But because this is the last coaster and I wanted to get it done quickly, that's the coaster type that I want to give a good amount of time to and theme up really well and not just plonk down like I have with this one. So I'm going to save that for another map. Uh, we'll definitely get a chance to build it if we do the DLC ones as well. So I just ended up um, make it really straightforward, compact uh, ghost layout. layout. Um, the only thing I struggled with here was finding a way back to the station um, once I'd finished the bulk of the build because we really didn't have much room and with that chair swing right next to the station as well um, I was really tight for space and finding a place to put the brake run but we managed to get it done again quite a bit of the footage cut out and um, to save time on the video and we give it this nice golden uh, red colour, or orangey red, but you couldn't really see it in, on the background, so I changed all the ground cover to the brown mud, which, I don't know, it looks a bit silly, but I end up just covering the border of it with rocks and then it looks alright, um, and it sort of breaks up the, the very barren, bland terrain colour as well that we've got for the rest of the map. So yeah, finalising things in with a path, of course, across to the station and some quick supports before I build what's probably one of the quickest coaster stations I've ever built in a map. Um, you can tell at this point I really want to get things finished. That doesn't mean it doesn't look okay. Um, sometimes less is more. Um, and yeah, I kept this one really simple, but I think it's absolutely fine. Again, this is probably a new attraction for the park. They wanted to... Um, build a functional station that fits the theme and colours but without going overboard with it. They just wanted to get bums on seats, so to say, for the ride, so that's what they did um, if this were a real park. And again, a very simple maintenance shed, but this one not covered up, so you'd actually be able to see vehicles in there at night. I don't know if that's realistic or not, but I think it is a nice bit of variation. I had to dismantle the ride the coaster to uh, fit in the second bit of track but yeah it was worth it because of how it looks and uh, you can see I've done all the rock work now for the edge of that build so yes this is pretty much it just doing a final final few touches um, with some rock work and some various other uh, some foliage sorry and some various other bits and bobs a bit of long grass again um, and I sort of turn this into a burial dig type thing, so we I think we call it oh, we call it something or other dig, um, dynamite dig. That was it. And that is it for this mammoth build. <laughs> like I say this map took me absolutely ages, um, but I was very glad to finish it. Uh, the goals got done while that coaster was being built. So let's jump into the final park tour. Welcome to the final uh, park tour for Coaster Canyon. This is a completed map in all its glory. Um, you can see it's an absolutely huge map by the time we've done with it. Um, probably could have compacted it into a smaller area if I didn't use up so much space for the dueling coasters, but I think it's worth it because um, 
yeah, I think they look great. I really uh, like the interaction that we've got on them, so we'll go and have a ride on them in a minute. Um, one thing to say, if you look at the money that we've made, I've not really mentioned much about the goals since we just got on with the time lapse, but um, yeah, the park makes really good money and we've got like 264 grand which is the most I've ever ended any campaign on before um, but obviously it has got six coasters operating um, lots of flat rides lots of shops and stalls um, so you know it's going to make money but getting to that point was quite tricky in the first place but all in all I've really enjoyed building this park uh, even though it took a long long time um, I think the end result's really good I'm really happy with it so let's get into the park. Let's take a look in a bit closer detail. So here's our entrance area. We've got a cash machine, an info kiosk, and a first aid stool. Um, just to give those a purpose, really. That's actually really annoying me now. I've obviously not done my zoning quite right here. But let's just stick another one on there just to get this done. Zone one, I guess. Yeah, zone one. So here is the sort of entrance uh, coaster fly over over the path and you can see oh look at that absolutely brilliant uh, one of them has to invert here and the other has to do a, a sideways still but I think we make up for it by this one having a final inversion there um, so I think they've both got exactly the same amount of inversions interestingly and anyway we come through and we've got our main shops and stalls here so everything's just a customizable stall loads of different food and drink outlets I'm not going to sort of go into detail of what each one is uh, we've got our first ride here which is the Enterprise and there's our carousel you can now see in a bit more detail how we ended up looking with the custom canopy I'm really happy with it obviously the diagonal borders really added quite a lot to to that build um, but yeah there's still some sections that I couldn't find a piece to cover it up with so these corners but I think that looks fine I don't think that's a problem um, moving on then a purely for show western facade here and our top spin ride is just here somehow managed to squeeze that in between all this track and I think the time has come then to ride the rocky races so this is obviously our um, dueling coaster don't know what a manufacturer for this would be possibly Vacoma is sort of inspired by uh, West Coast racers at Six Flags Magic Mountain um, and yeah I'll just quickly show you the stats before we ever go on them so for the first one the excitement is ultra extreme I've never seen that on a coaster I built before uh, and a high intensity on the second one it's just an extreme excitement not quite as exciting for some reason a very high intensity for that one so let's go on number one first um, I think we're gonna have to jump on this train that's here how many have we got running on this thing three trains yeah okay so yeah it's usually a pretty quick turnaround because it's usually got a full queue um, and obviously the operations I've made sure are good on this and there we go launching into the first inversion and down into a helix where it sort of meanders across the park um, doing some quite wide helixes into a sort of dive stool type thing whatever you call that um, and into that stool good element of um, interaction there before meandering into these tunnels and coming out into the first brake run and you can see the other track uh, the train is at exactly the same point pretty much into the second launch then no messing about and there is the coolest element in the coaster the, uh, the high five sort of still and then we have to do an inversion to make it into this bit and then the final stool and the final inversion into the brake run so that's it um, that's the first time I've actually taken a ride on it since all the females in the park so 
yeah, really happy with how that turned out. Let's have a look at Rocky Racers 2 then. We've got one in the station, hopefully ready to go. I'm going to speed it up now, just a bit so this doesn't get too long. Um, and here we go, we're launching into the first inversion, into a tunnel, straight away. I'm not going to try and name all the inversions because it would just take me too long. <laughs> won't be able to think of them all. But yeah, it does pretty similar stuff um, into this first moment of interaction with the other train. And then back into this rock section and the underground section. And really nice inversion to take it out there. And then there's the backstage stuff you don't see. It just had to do sort of an extra helix around so that it's timed the same as the upper train. And then into the second part of the ride as it starts to rain, unfortunately. And there's that interaction. And round into the final, final part of the ride. And it does an inversion there. Zero G roll rather than Just do a stall like the other one into the brake run. So that's it then, those are our rocky races. Uh, really fun attraction, I'm just going to pause it for a sec so that we can get rid of the rain. So there we go, let me know your thoughts on these coasters. Probably some of the best I've built in any of the campaign playthroughs. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how they turned out in the end. So let's continue our way then. Um, I think we'll cross the bridge now and take a look at the mine train coaster and the little area that we've got around here. The Wild West Mining Co. is the name. Um, not very original at all, I know. But yeah, it's a mine train. What, what can you do? So those are the stats. It only just makes the excitement by seven points. Um, and that's because of all the theming. When it's just on its own, it wasn't making the, the 5.0 that we needed for the goals, interestingly. There's one at the top of the lift hill, so I'm just going to go straight away. Um, again, I think um, the operations on these coasters are all pretty good, um, apart from maybe the ghost tower, because I never bothered to check that it wasn't getting stuck on the mid course at all. But yeah, sorry, getting a little bit off topic there. Um, it's a standard mine train coaster layout. There's not much to say about it. I think my favourite part though is the bridge when it goes over the water. Um, which is just over here. I think that looks quite fun. And then there's some good interaction with the racing coasters as well. Or with the duelling coasters rather. And yeah, the, the, the theming and the buildings for this area are really simple. Um, nothing too fancy at all. Um, but I think it looks really nice with this chair swing as well and the colour scheme that we've gone for here. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with all of that. Right, I'd actually made a mistake there and loaded up the autosave part, so that's what we've been looking at, uh, the last autosave. But the only difference is this section, so what you've seen so far is exactly the same as the completed park. Um, so I'm not going to go back and re-record it. So we move on to our Gershlau coaster then, our newest coaster to the park, Dynamite Dig. It's actually got really high excitement of 80.7. Uh, mid intense or high intensity, sorry, 70.9. Uh, probably due to all the tight inversions. Um, again, I'm not sure about the operations for this one if it gets stuck on a lift hill or a brake run because I've not perfected it yet. Um, probably should have moved on to the next car, but we'll just skip till everyone's on it. Let's see what happens. I believe it's only running three trains, um, it's got a mid course brake run. So yeah, should be enough really. But I actually quite like how the basic, very simple theming comes together with this. See all the little um, things like it's sort of an architectural dig. Um, that's that didn't make sense, did it? But yeah, you know what I mean. So it's got a um, an over vertical drop, more than vertical drop, into a uh, inverted loop, and then a couple of other inversions and helixes and whatnot. And again, it's a pretty standard layout, but I, I am really happy with how compact I managed to make this. Um, considering we're running out of room in the park, and I didn't want it being some sort of massive eyesore. I wanted to make it look like it actually did fit into 
to the park and to the rest of the theming. So, yeah, I think that's a fun little coaster. Operations seem pretty good on it as well. So, quite pleased with that. And that brings us on really to our final area. Um, so, I suppose it's not that big, this park is just sprawled out. And that is the inverted coaster area. Uh, we'll take a little bit more look in detail at these buildings. So, I used some sort of uh, western pieces here as balconies. I think they're a really cool piece to use, but unfortunately they have to be placed on one grid space. I think if we could place them on a second grid space you could do a lot more with them. But yeah, again using the text for uh, a balcony sort of border there and stuff like that that we couldn't otherwise do without that piece. And then we've got a fun little canopy for the teacups there. And now you can see in a bit more detail my um, coaster netting that I've built, which I think looks believable enough. Quite happy with how it turned out. Um, we've just got a separate section off to the left here. Maybe I should have connected this up, but I don't think it really matters because it's just for one ride, uh, which is one of these rides in Orbiter, um, which was originally in the map actually, but obviously I've moved it from where it was to start with, I believe. Um, so, I don't know, let's have a little bit more look in detail at how this turned out, because obviously the time lapse for this area was really rushed. Um, you can see that it just spends most of the time flying above the path. I tried to get coaster netting and canopies over as much of the uh, path sections that have coaster flying over them as possible um, for the realism. So here it is, it's called Showdown. Uh, the, the ratings are 75.4 for excitement, 58.8 for intensity. Pretty standard really, and we're timing this really well with some of these coasters. Um, we're getting straight off the mark with this one. So I'm going to fast forward up the lift hill. Again, a standard uh, inverted coaster layout, a nice curved first drop all the way around into a loop and then into a cobra roll and all this section is dug out into the ground but I think it all looks like it was supposed to be built like that now um, I've done enough terrain work to make it all fit in nicely and uh, yeah it just makes it its way around with some helixes then into a zero G type roll um, and then round into the mid course break run Although it's probably slightly beyond the mid course because the rest of the layout is a shorter bit. Um, really slowly drops into this uh, curved drop and then it makes its way round the corkscrews quite slowly but with a reasonable speed I think and there's some really fun path interaction there as well. Barely making it there into the brake run. And yeah, I'm happy with the layout for that one. I think it came together quite well. Uh, a couple of other things I just wanted to show you quickly then. I actually added in these sort of telephone wires or electric cabling. Um, I feel like they fit in nicely to a western scene and I think that I could have done maybe a bit more of this in different places uh, but I didn't want to overdo it and I thought of it just right at the end of the build really. So they sit in nicely with these buildings here. They almost give me a sort of a Route 66 feel as well. Um, you can sort of see these ones a bit better from this angle as well. And um, this little display here was already in the part right at the back where no one could see it. And I thought that's actually quite a nice little diorama type thing. So I copied it and uh, it's probably not the right word, is it? But I copied it and uh, blueprinted it, sorry, and placed it here. And I think, uh, yeah. Really nice little piece that. Um, we've got our jumper. Nothing special to say there. And that brings us on to our final coaster for the park before we end the tour and put this video to bed. <laughs> so it's a Golden Wonder. It's an RMC monorail or single rail. 83.3 excitement, 52.5 intensity. Let's take a ride on it. Another very compact layout. Um, just crammed into the back of the park to make the coaster count and uh, is it gonna go? Yep, yeah, here we go. 
So up the rather short lift hill, um, it's not at all layout this at all, um, not, a, not a particularly big layout either, um, it's all crammed in together but it packs a punch, there's definitely some good elements on it, so yeah, it's almost like that first inversion there, I'm trying to think what it's called on the, uh, on the flying coasters, almost like one of them sort of elements isn't it? Uh, but yeah, loads of inversions, loads of dive loops, loads of corkscrews into half loops and stuff like that. And loads of inversions I don't know the name of, but all crammed in together and I think it works out really well. Uh, I think this would be super intense in real life. They squeeze the layout in like that. Yeah, you can see where that piece was originally in the map, so I must have left it there as well. But I think it also works quite well with the fun oversized cactus pieces that we've got here as well and uh, yeah if we zoom out we can take another look at the completed park again in fact it is a big map I don't know what I was saying a minute ago it is a big map um, it's a really fun one to do and um, whatever you do don't go for the optional goals unless you just want to cheese it like I did in the start uh, take your time with this one it really pays off you can make something that looks really nice so yeah, let's save it again and go back to the um, map screen. Okay, so that's Coaster Canyon done and uh, we've got an odd situation next because the next two maps I've already completed the gold coins. I've done the optional goals for both of them on my previous playthrough. Um, but we're getting towards the end now of how far I got before. Um, so I think that was the last map I did. I've not done Silica Slopes or Kaiserberg or anything else that way. Um, so it will be all new to me once we've done these next three maps. Um, I think what I'll do next is Pagoda Valley. Um, because then I can do Hickory Hill and Kaiserberg. And then break it up a bit rather than having two Asian free maps next to each other. Um, so yeah, Pagoda Valley next. I know it's an easy one, so that's good. And it should be a much quicker one to get together. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone. <laughs>